Hello and welcome to my demonstration of the API CPI system. The API system or graph supports that are used in conjunction with the articulator by removing the motion analogs and adding the graph supports. Where the CPI system is a dedicated articulator with built in graph supports. The main difference between the two is that with the API system, we will be utilizing a centric pin here to index our horizontal table. So if we actually have a tilt in the axis, from CO to CR, this pin will co come down at an angulation indexing a horizontal deviation when there may or may not be one. Or with the CPI system here, we have a table that will come up to the axis point, so if we have a tilt in the axis from CO to CR, we won't indicate a horizontal deviation until one actually occurs. Otherwise, the systems are somewhat basically the same. With the CPI system, you do get the uh, graph papers included, but you also get a set of data record sheets where you can add different CPI readings or AxiPath recordings to the data record sheet. We do have the optional optical resolver, which has a tenth of a millimeter scale built into it, so you can read the deviations from CO to CR down to a tenth of a millimeter. Otherwise, the systems are basically the same. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the API system at this time. First, we do want to remove the Dynalink pins from the motion analogs and put them in the storage hole. We can remove the upper frame by releasing the centric latch. We can use the rubber band at this point to help hold the latch down out of our way. And we do want to remove the centric channel for our horizontal graph support. So there's a little button head screw here on the bottom. I'll go ahead and loosen that and remove that button head screw. And then we can remove the brass centric channel. We can then replace that with the horizontal table. There we go. Then with the upper frame, we do want to loosen our set screws here in the back with a hex wrench. Then we can loosen the thumb screws on top to remove our motion analogs. We also want to remove our analog thumb screws because we're going to replace those with the API screws. The API screws have actually have a machined end that's very, very flat, which will index to the flat here on the shaft to orientate this graph support in the proper location. So we'll go ahead and add the API screws to the upper frame. Then we can add the vertical graph supports by pushing them all the way into the articulator and tightening the API screw, which will orientate that graph support in the right location. We'll do this to the other side. Now we can actually pull these out a little bit. Now we have the graph paper. The graph paper here will peel off a sheet of the graph paper. It does have a left, a right, and a horizontal graph paper. And that will correspond with the patient's. So we're going to start here with the patient's left side. So I'm going to start with the patient left graph paper. There are little windows in the graph paper. So as you peel these back, peel them back so that the little window opens up. Or you can take a little tool to remove the little dot there so you can see the little window openings and then I'll go ahead and put on my glasses I'll go ahead and line up the graph paper this time looking through the window to line up the horizontal line on the graph support to the horizontal line on the graph paper then I'll also look at the vertical line on the graph support and line that up with the vertical line on the graph paper I'll go ahead and do that to the other side as well Again, I'll line up the horizontal line on the graph support with the horizontal line on the graph paper as well as the vertical line on the graph support with the vertical line on the graph paper. Now I'll stick that into place. Then we also have the horizontal graph paper. It does have an anterior edge, so we'll stick that towards the anterior edge and line up the center line of the graph paper to the center line of the graph support and we'll go ahead and push that down into place. And we can stick that down like that. Now we can go ahead and add our centric relation record. This is the record we mounted the cast with. So put that in. I do want to raise my incisal pin up out of my Y so it's not interfering so I can index the upper cast into the centric relation record. I'll push firmly down in that position while I loosen the incisal pin here in the front, which will drop down to create a larger dry pod for better stabilization. At this point, I'll go ahead and use a marking ribbon. We'll put the die side towards the graph paper. 
We can push this laterally out and then give a little tug on the graph paper to pause a little die if we need to. And we'll do that on both sides. I'll also mark the horizontal graph at this time. Since this is the centric relation record we mounted the cast with, I expect the dot to be on or very close to the crosshair of the graph paper. We can then go ahead and remove the centric relation record and we can put the cast together into MIP. Again, I want to raise the incisal pin up out of our Y. I'll go ahead and get the cast in here into MIP position right there looks pretty good. So again, I'll push down firmly in MIP position, drop the incisal pin down in the front, creating a larger tripod. I'll go ahead and mark the graph supports with a different color marking ribbon. And I'll mark the horizontal graph support as well. Now we go ahead and mark the graphs. I can see on the patient's left side that the condyles come downward and forward, which means it's a possibly a slide. On the patient's right side, the condyles actually move downward and backward, which is actually a fulcrum. And then we can see the horizontal graph. If we review the graph again, we can see the CR green spot and the MIP red spot. So when this patient bites their teeth together, the condyle comes downward and forward. This could either mean a pure slide or part slide, part fulcrum. We can actually use our AxiPath protractor where we actually have the patient's protrusive pathway on the protractor. And we know from the patient's protrusive check bite that their angulation was at number eight. So we start with the apex of the pathway at the CR point, and then we can rotate this to the number eight, lines up with the horizontal line on the graph support. And we can now see that the MIP spot is right on the patient's pathway, which means this is a 100% slide. Let's say the patient had a number two angulation, so I'll rotate this up to number two. And now we can see the MIP red spot is below the patient's pathway. So that means this is a part slide, part fulcrum. The distance from the vertical line forward is the amount of slide, and the distance from the pathway down to the spot is fulcrum. If we look at the patient's other side or right side, we can see that when they bite their teeth together, the condyle just moves down and backward, which is 100% fulcrum. So now that we go ahead and mark those, we can go ahead and remove our graph supports from the upper frame. And we can remove the API screws. We can then replace the analog thumb screws. And then replace the motion analogs. And we can lock that in place using the lock screws here in the back. We can then remove the horizontal graph support and replace our centric channel using the button screw and the hex wrench. Now if you notice here, there's also a little half moon effect here on the bottom of the centric channel, which means if I tighten the screw down real tight, it'll pull the center down and actually squeeze the size inward. So this centric channel is adjustable. So if you over tighten the button screw, the centric pin will not slide through the channel well. So you may need to adjust that slightly. So we'll go ahead and release the rubber band here in the back to release the centric latch. We can go ahead and add our upper frame back to the articulator and add back our Dynalink pins. Then we can remove our graph paper from our graph supports and peel those off slowly so they don't tear. There is little lines here on the graph paper indicating where to cut the graph paper. You can cut those on both sides. And then you can actually put this right onto the data record sheet, patient's right side. Then I'll move the left side graph support, again, peeling it back slowly. 
And then we'll cut on the little perforated lines here where to cut. And now we can add the vertical uh, graph support patient's left side to our data record sheet. Then we can go ahead and peel off our horizontal graph support and we can stick that in place onto the horizontal transfer. And that concludes my presentation on the API CPI system. Thank you.